Climb on board for adventure when Team Quest gathers the components they need for time travel in Tokyo, but a familiar looking thief throws their plans into chaos. Who is this new adversary? Let's talk about it in our review of Johnny Quest number three from Dynamite Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Johnny Quest number three. Writer Joe Casey takes Team Quest's adventure global when they arrive in Tokyo, and what should be a short field trip turns into an espionage thriller with mysterious enemies, twists and turns, and an ending that sees Johnny in the worst possible spot. This series continues to be the gold standard in comic adaptations. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened in the last issue. When last we left Johnny and his family in Johnny Quest number two, they set out to gather the components necessary to rebuild the machine that would send them back in time. Old Man Johnny led the team to Japan, which is where they could find the updated version of the components, but the team decided to make a quick stop in India first to enlist Old Man Haji. Unfortunately, that little side trip didn't turn out well. That brings us to the current issue. In Johnny Quest number three, Dr. Quest, Race, and the rest of the team enjoyed the collegial hospitality of the Fukunaga Corporation to make the updated components necessary to rebuild the quantum counter. Race wonders aloud why they don't just assemble the components on the spot, but Dr. Quest explains the conditions are too unpredictable, and they need to recreate the conditions of the original time jump or risk sending the entire crew back to the Stone Age. To be fair, and admittedly, the opening scene is a little bit dry. Joe Casey doesn't get bogged down in too much pseudoscience and techno babble, and the scene is necessary to pre-answer some of the expected plot hole questions that a reader would automatically jump to. But it's not the most thrilling start. It's okay. It's not bad. But it's just okay. Race is given the case containing the quantum counter components for safekeeping while the rest of the team cleans up. As Race heads to the plane to prepare for departure, he's jumped by a woman wearing full motorcycle gear and a face covering helmet. Despite his best fighting efforts, the woman flees with the case. We don't know who she is, what she wants, or why she wants the case, but now it's gone and Race is left wounded. Ah, uh, here we go. Now we have a new player on the scene. The nameless, faceless woman is a formidable fighter, and you can almost tell who it is, or who she might be connected to, without too much trouble. Race's fight is admirable, but sometimes speed and agility win the day, so the fight is believable despite their differences in size and strength. The scene switches outside, where we find Johnny, Haji, and Bandit admiring a trio of modern motorcycles, which are unlike anything they're used to. Suddenly, the thief rushes past the boys and takes off on one of the motorcycles. The boys quickly deduce from the alarms that the woman is a thief, so they hop on the remaining motorcycles and give chase. They eventually corner the thief and force her off her motorcycle. When she removes her helmet to confront the boys, Johnny and Haji are stunned to see that the thief is a spitting image of Jezebel Jade. Well, you can't say that we didn't see this one coming. From the bits of dialogue between the boys, they knew the thief's movements and voice were familiar. For new readers, Jezebel Jade was a regularly recurring character in Johnny Quest's adventures back in 1964. So to have her daughter, granddaughter, we think it's a granddaughter show up here is not a surprise at all, but it is a welcome addition to the cast of characters. Suddenly the boys, Bandit and the Thief, are surrounded by a group of ninjas who appear out of nowhere. After a well-fought fight, Johnny, Haji, and the Thief, who introduces herself as Jasmine, are captured. The issue ends with Race, Dr. Quest, and old man Johnny catching up too late and the captives meeting their captor. Overall, Johnny Quest number three is another stellar entry in the series that focuses on action and adventure with a small twist of science fiction to maintain the heart and soul of the original property. Joe Casey truly gets what makes Johnny Quest so memorable and we love every minute of it. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Sebastian Perez and Lorenzo Scaramella deserve all the praise you can muster and more for blending a modern aesthetic with the classic Johnny Quest vibe for a comic that feels classic and modern at the same time. Even the opening scene, which we admit is a bit dry, looks exactly as you would expect for a top research facility in one of the world's most advanced technology labs. Every aspect of the visuals in this issue is pitch perfect. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. From what little information we can glean, the thief is likely the granddaughter of the regular Johnny Quest character known as Jezebel Jade. For readers unfamiliar with Jade, she was a dangerous mercenary and sometime love interest for Race Bannon. Not always, but on occasion. Jade first appeared in the Johnny Quest episode titled Double Danger, which first aired on November 13, 1964. Final thoughts, what do we think about Johnny Quest number three from Dynamite Comics? 
It's another super strong entry in the sci-fi action-adventure series that finds Team Quest in Japan, where they encounter old enemies and new allies. Maybe. Joe Casey expertly captures the exact right tone to further the Johnny Quest lore, and the art team's delivery is pitch perfect. Therefore, Johnny Quest number 3 earns a 9 out of 10. Joe Casey's take on a 60-year-old IP hasn't missed a beat. But what do you think? Between Johnny Quest and Space Ghost, Dynamite has the Hanna-Barbera IPs locked down tight. But which one is your favorite? Leave a thumbs up if you found this review helpful, and drop a comment below with which classic cartoon you would like to see Dynamite tackle next. My money is on Birdman. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.